Hello everyone and thank you Valentina and Cornel for having organized this session and for inviting me. Uh, I would like to begin my presentation with a question. Why do we have to study tidal straits and why are they relevant for science? There are a number of good reasons to promote investigations of modern straits and seaways as they are enormously advantageous for industry, for commercial trades. They are areas for development of impressively diversified marine life and they are sites for renewable energy represented by tidal currents in perennial motion, among many other reasons. But are also ancient straits important and do they need to be investigated in ancient stratigraphic subsections? Maybe yes. And in this presentation, I will try to introduce some basic aspects supported by field evidences coming from a number of ancient tidal straits of the central Mediterranean basin that can be used as possible criteria to disentangle other similar subsections in the rock record. Straits are among the most impressive and powerful geological systems of the world. Due to lateral coastal constriction or bottom shallowing, marine currents converge across the strait center and are compressed, leading to remarkable phenomena of water acceleration, turbulence, vortexes and additional sea surface roughness. So straits are loci of huge energy exchanges. And this enormous power exerted by masses of water in perennial movement exerts an important influence on plastic sediments, on their distribution, physical characteristics, and associated biological activity of organisms adapted to such very energetic conditions. Sediments are continuously entrained in strays, eroded and transported in one dominant direction by the strongest currents, or distributed in specific areas when flows are bidirectional due to tidal inversion that occur between the two wider water bodies that straits connect. Nowadays we reach a good state of knowledge about the physical oceanography of modern sea straits. Processes like water mass exchanges, current amplification, internal waves are now well known thanks to even more sophisticated techniques of geophysical investigation and direct observation with submarine probes and drones. Also, many aspects related with their sedimentary dynamics are nowadays better constrained. However, these processes represent phenomena that can be documented at a human temporal scale of months, years, up to decades, whereas long-term Geological processes acting on millennia to longer time scale, such as the effect of sea level changes or climatic variations, are difficult to assess on modern strait systems. Therefore, also for tidal straits, we need to integrate the observation of modern systems with the analysis of good ancient outcrop analogs. And this represents the main subject of this presentation the observation of ancient straight fields as section to constrain long-term sedimentary processes and to, possibly, suggest some basic criteria to recognize ancient straits in the rock record, especially where the geological history of the half has cancelled any clear primary evidence of the existence of ancient straits or in the subsurface, where often we deal with incomplete frameworks about the geological objects and their geometrical or genetic relationship. Our investigations have been mostly based on ancient straits developed during the New Age in Quaternary time in the central western Mediterranean. This geographical framework shows the distribution of the major onshore sedimentary subsections whose genesis has been attributed to local conditions 
of tidal amplification during phases of marine inundation. Outcrops mostly resemble remnants of ancient straits and bays, where today sandstone deposits exhibiting large-scale cross-stratification are exposed and have been documented by various research groups. The Mediterranean Basin is today microtidal, but, very likely, it has maintained identical oceanographic conditions also during the last 5 million of years, mostly because of its confined setting. For this main reason, the Mediterranean would be expected to, to generate no pronounced tides, in theory. Actually, the connection between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean, which occurs through the 13 kilometers wide Gibraltar Strait to the west, represents an important prerequisite for stimulating phenomena of tidal current amplification through other narrow straits. This is mostly because continuous pulses of oceanographic water penetration occurs through the Gibraltar Strait following a tidal modulation every six hours per day. We believe that this basic oceanographic mechanism has been one of the two most important conditions for the onset of tidal amplification through the Straits of the Mediterranean. The other condition is the occurrence of local morphotectonic coastal narrowings, which, being directly proportional with the mass of water passing through these areas, generate an horizontal tidal acceleration due to the restriction of the cross-sectional area. Our observations have been based on a number of ancient straight field subsections and their comparison with modern landlords. Therefore, the criteria I'm going to discuss are mostly model-driven. The model which has been for the first time published in 2013 and then slightly implemented based on additional observations and achievements, basically postulate that sedimentation in tidal straits is partly predictable. The oscillatory passage of tidal currents, which follow a collinear but bidirectional reversal pathways and that accelerate across the narrowest straight portion, usually the center, and that decelerate at the two opposite straight exits, replicate sedimentary conditions common to a wide number of modern examples, although with differences due to local morphological and oceanographic variables. Accordingly, tidal straits can be divided into four main depositional zones. The straight center, which is the narrowest or shallowest part of a strait, where tidal currents reach peak velocity, sedimentation is reduced to zero, and bypass conditions dominate. The new banded zones, corresponding with two wider areas where tidal currents decelerate and sedimentation produces a spectrum of bare forms whose size scales with a decreasing flow of strength, the strain dead zones, representing the peripheral exits of a strait transiting to open marine distal conditions, where the currents slow down until they stop and reverse for initiating a new tidal cycle, and the strait margins, where river fluids, waves, delta progradation, and rock collapses from steep cliffs are all processes interplaying with the tidal currents flowing actually to the strait and generating a diagnostic type of accumulations. So the sedimentary signature of each of these zones can be detectable in the rock record, based on some stratigraphic and sedimentological criteria which I am going to show. The straight center zone is an area of residual coarse-grained deposition. In modern examples, such as in the Messina Strait uh, here on the left side, or the Minas Passage, Cobequid Bay on the right side, 
We observe that gravels are accumulated forming discrete bodies or entrapped into bathymetric lows. Currents are strong enough to transport in suspension finer grain plastic particles that are transferred towards the two opposite areas of the strait. Documented outcrops have been observed in the inferred strait center of the Pleistocene Messina Strait in southern Italy, here in the left side, and in the Miocene Betic Strait of southwestern Spain in the bottom right corner. Typical straight center faces show gravel pavements or legs displaying lenticular geometry in cross-sectional view. They also show open work, textures, or are matrix supported, where the matrix represents post-depositional infilling of fine grain and sediment. Gravel clusters are often imbricated and associated or incrusted by rest of organisms adapted to highly ventilated waters. Other additional features include cross-bedding in gravel deposits and the Neptunian dikes filling fractured portions of the bedrock. In contrast with the stray center zone, the dune-bedded zones are highly depositional areas. In modern tidal straits, they represent environments where tidal currents start decelerating, depositing sediments progressively even finer due to a gradual and proportional decrease of bed load transport capacity. The sedimentary expression of these zones in modern tidal straits is the remarkable presence of bed forms that may encompass the entire site spectrum or traditional sedimentary structures from tidal sand ridges to large dunes to smaller ripples. Commonly, sinusoidal crested dunes transit down current to straight crested dunes, migrate towards the two opposite straight exits and form individual or quiescent fields. Where unconfined, dunes may be later adjacent to rippled fine grain and fines. The sedimentary record of these highly depositional zones is the one of the most distinctive and diagnostic criteria for recognizing ancient tidal straits. The presence of overthickened subsections or vertically stacked crossbed descent ridge intervals. They may contain sets of crossbeds with individual thickness ranging from less than 1 meter to more than 10 meters separated by master erosional surfaces and including a number of internal structures, whose size scales with the duration of the genetic tidal processes. Typical sedimentary structures include herringbone cross-fortification, reactivation surfaces, cycles of tangential angular tangential forests, nip spring coursing to finding lamina forest intervals, and tidal bundles forming couples of coarse to fine lamine. Bioturbation may be diffusely present, or may occupy discrete forested horizons, corresponding with the highest and the lowest tidal energy stage of dune accretion, depending on the ichnogenera. Cross-bedded subsections in straits result from the centennial to millennial timescale processes of superimposition of bed forms under the tractional effect of tidally modulated subaqueous currents. Usually, the dune bedded zones experience a strong tidal asymmetry due to the fact that one phase is always stronger than the opposite one because of the basic mechanism of amplification that occurs across the straight center. Consequently, four sets can often be observed as markedly asymmetrical as well. The straight end zones are the exits of a straight. 
Because of the progressively reduced transport capacity of tidal currents, these environments commonly underlie to a general condition of sediment starvation. However, modern straight end zones show the sporadic presence of trains of small bed forms, from medium dunes to ripples, on which often other bed forms superimpose with different direction of migration. This is mainly due to the stages of tidal inversions, during which an interference between the decaying tidal phase and the opposite new tidal phase may occur. Ancient straight end subsections consist predominantly of heterolithic deposits, and are thought to have accumulated in a zone whose processes imitate tide-dominated estuarine or deltaic type environments or sedimentation. Mud-rich intervals prevail in thickness in the order of 1-2 meters of feet beds and contain sporadic sandier intercalations. This facious assemblage suggests repeated processes of accumulation from settling of fines transported by decelerating tidal currents with high suspended sediment concentrations, whereas sand reflects isolated bed forms fields or moribund dunes. Forest average directions indicate tidal inversions and rotatory circulation. Bioturbation is pervasive and, in places, it tends to completely homogenize any primary sedimentary structure. The flanks of a tidal strait are highly dynamic sedimentary areas. Tectonically active straits are bordered by fault plains, resulting in clifford coasts and steep sublateral ramps or slopes, rapidly descending into deeper parts of the strait. Along these margins, fan deltas and scree cone aprons are common. Sublittoral processes are mostly gravity terminated, and mass wasting and instabilities are diffuse phenomena associated with the seasonal or occasional high magnitude density or hyperpycnal river fluids entering the strait. In systems with tectonically more stable margins, flanks dip typically more gently, hosting river deltas and extensive tidally modulated shore faces. Deltas or other marginal strait systems may be reworked by tidal currents, being stretched or elongated in the direction of the dominant tidal component, as in the case of the Elwa River Delta protruding into the Juan de Fuca Strait, Pacific coast of Canada. In both cases, steeply versus gently flanked straits, sedimentation at the margins derive from a continuous interplay between processes entering the strait perpendicularly and tidal currents flowing at high angle or parallel to the strait coastline. Because of such huge process variability, the sedimentary record of marginal zones of ancient tidal straits is probably the most complicated to assess. In general, straight marginal faces commonly consist of assemblages of interbedded tidal and non-tidal deposits. Steep straight margin faces are dominantly coarse-grained, often texturally very mature, generated by processes of collapses of portions of rocky cliffs and especially in tectonically active areas. These facies form localized, slow basis screw cone accumulations of breccia or blocks often encrusted by organisms preferring hard substrates. Other deposits include conglomerates containing fragments of shells reflecting the erosion of short-lived pocket gravel beaches after episodes of margin instability. Steep straight margins may also be associated with poorly stratified sediment accumulation transported from ephemeral rivers. Then, the diagnostic criteria to detect straight marginal facies is a rhythmic alternation of tidal cross-bedded deposits, 
reflecting the deposition of transit of tidal dunes migrating actually through the strait, and non-tidal coarse grain deposits deriving from the gravitative-driven marginal processes. So the physical features we saw until now represent only a very partial framework about the huge facies variability that ancient straits may reveal. Moreover, this observation referred mostly to a restricted number of tectonically controlled straits. Nevertheless, we can dispose of a sufficient number of elements to outline some basic principle we can use in searching for tidal straits of the past and to delineate a general strategy of research. If we assume a common engine that regulates sea straits dominated by tidal currents, we can also presume the existence of the zones indicated in the model. In other words, Straight lithophages and their lateral relationships may be predictable. For example, one of the most outstanding lithophages in ancient straits is the vertical stacking across bed sets in sand side deposits. This element would indicate the localization of the dune bedded zone, the zone where currents were expected to be decelerating after having passed through the straight center. The detection of paleocurrent patterns in these deposits is crucial, as paleoflow directions may directly reveal upcurrent and downcurrent zones. Expectedly, these areas may thus correspond to the straight center and the straight dense zones, respectively. Another associated strategy to recognize the straight center which usually represents a zone where bed load is distributed in two main opposite directions of basinal transport, is the identification of thickness changes of the cross-bedded lithophages. Dune complexes tend to pinch out both upcurrent and downcurrent. Therefore, their upcurrent termination is a criteria that indicates the area of bed load parting at that time, and where, expectedly, tidal currents were too strong to generate deposition. This approach may be useful since a straight center environment may be difficult to be properly characterized in the field. Once the straight zone partitioning of our ancient system is revealed, the analysis of vertical trends of straight field subsections then represents the next step to reconstruct the history of the strait. We saw as the large cross-bedded lithophages representing the dew bed and zones is the more outstanding type of straight field deposit and it is often more easy to assess, thanks to a number of sedimentological features. We also saw that in modern straits, 3D dunes and 2D dunes form a continuum, reflecting the progressive downcurrent depletion of tidal flow energy. When they stack with each other, and we apply the Walter principle in these two phases, we can constrain temporal variability of flow strength and the migration of straight depositional zones through time. The reciprocal and systematic stacking may thus be used as a proxy to reconstruct transgressive versus regressive tidal field subsections. We recently suggested that three main different combinations of reciprocal stacking of through versus planar cross beds, inferred for dune bed straight field subsections. They may record A, transgressive, B, normal regressive, and C, forced regressive vertical trends. And note, as the mutual stacking between 2D and 3D cross beds is diagnostic for each of the proposed subsections. The same principle can be used to assess main sequence radiographic discontinuities, system structs, and high-frequency sequences and parasequences. 
All these informations thus reveal how the strait evolved through time, transiting to non-tidal open body conditions or, for example, towards a progressive immersion and subaerial exposure. Of course, these different stories lead to a different degree of preservation of the soil field faces and vertical stratigraphic trends and may change from case to case, depending on the imprinting of actic tectonics, for example. So the concepts discussed in this presentation have attempted at summarizing the main recurrent sedimentary and stratigraphic features that can be used as a proxy for recognizing ancient tidal straits in the rock record. However, the great variability of strait scales, size, the morphobatimetric differences, the local oceanographic forcings, and the geometry of the connected basins are all variables that make reconstruction always very difficult. Therefore, these criteria attempt at giving a general indications as they represent a simplification of reality. However, they are a starting point for the development of new research strategies and to recognize new criteria and principles that regulate long-term geological processes in tidal straits. There are a number of open problems in the investigation of ancient straits. They shape a morphology, which is an important element conditioning the strains on partitioning discussed in this presentation. The sediment accumulation rates, a strait may be subject to high sedimentation or they may suffer a condition of starvation, depending on their climatic setting, for example. And waters transiting through straits are not always regulated by the same type of power, temporal cyclicity, and fluid dynamics. All these differences, as well as many more additional elements, make reconstructions or, and modeling far too be straightforward. Nevertheless, thanks to an even larger number of well-documented ancient case studies and modern explorations, Geologists are now concurring in regarding tidal straits as individual depositional systems, characterized by specific sediment dynamics and then able to generate a signature potentially discernible in the rock record. This attention has been promoted after the consciousness of the pervasive presence of straits along the modern coastlines, and that implies that they should have occurred more frequently in the past than previously inferred. We are just at the sunrise of the exploration of such complex but fascinating time-dominated depositional systems. The concomitant progressive increase of the number of investigations documenting past examples associated with the even newer technical approaches for the analysis of modern systems will hopefully end the complex pathway towards an universal model predicting the geological dynamics of tidal strains and space and time. Thank you for your attention.